Hey, Alchemy University. So this video is part of a kind of bigger guide on unit testing smart contracts using Hardhat. So I just wanted to do a quick video to show the flow that I like to kind of, if you're new to testing, this is a flow that I'd recommend. It just kind of gets you in there. It's quick, it's, it's awesome. So I have this like sample based project that Hardhat gives you. I just ran the typical ones, you know, MPMI Hardhat, MP, MPX Hardhat, and chose to create a JavaScript, which equips you with a fully fledged kind of Hardhat project, including sample files. So I like those sample files because it gets you in here and it's not like a, a blank slate that you need to kind of build from the ground up. If you're new to testing, it just kind of gives you everything as a sample and you can just kind of repurpose for your for your own stuff. So in this guide, we actually set up a faucet uh, smart contract, very simple. You can just deposit some ether and people can call the withdraw function and get some of that ether, right? Uh, an ether faucet. And we're trying to write unit tests because you know, this has a bunch of considerations that we need to test for. You know, it has a withdraw function. We want to make sure that people can withdraw only 0.1 ETH at a time. We want to make sure that this destroy faucet uh, is only callable by the people we want to call it with. A bunch of things, right? It's all laid out in the guide. But the flow I like to show is with this sample project that Hardhat gives you, you can go into the test.js and what I'm gonna do is we have our faucet, right? We had a lock.sol, but I removed it. That was part of the sample stuff. I don't need it. I just wanna test the faucet.sol. Obviously I still have this like lock.js specific one. Let's rename this to, I'm just gonna do faucet tests.js. And what I like to do is just, this is, this is really cool because it's not like an empty file like this where we have to like write everything from scratch, just repurpose it, repurpose the lock.js test for the faucet.sol. So I'm gonna erase anything that I don't need specific to the faucet.sol. So specific to the lock.sol, sorry. So we don't need that time thing, boom, instantly cleaner. We don't need this any value thing that's specific to, this, to the sample project, boom, instantly cleaner. So we have this, Hardhat does a new way of testing. It's really cool, it's just much more efficient. It says it here says we define a fixture to reuse the same setup in every test. It's called load fixture. That's the, the kind of imported to run this setup once, snapshot that state, and then it resets the hard hat network to snapshot in every test. So it's much more efficient. It just basically has you set up preconditions for a test, gets that snapshot, and then reuses it for all, all your tests, making it much more efficient. So this lock.sol or lock.js that was testing was using like a time-based, you know, uh, uh, mechanism in the contract. So it was testing based on these seconds. So for one, we don't need any of this time stuff that's relevant to the lock. Uh, and also we can, I like to call this, this fixture, the load fixture. I like to just call it deploy contract and set variables. And you'll see why in a sec. So let's, let's keep going through this keep repurposing these, this file. It's just the, the only thing you have to do. We don't need any of this. We don't need signers for the moment. And this is, now we've shortened the test and this is my favorite part. You just pick apart the lock stuff to repurpose to yours. So change the capital lock to faucet because that's the contract that we're targeting and any other capital locks, replace them with faucet. So I believe it's just three there. And then a lowercase lock will be a lowercase faucet. The deployment, so notice this deployment call is still pertinent to the lock contract. In the faucet, we have a constructor that takes no arguments. So we can delete these arguments from the sample. Boom, and there we go. So out of all of this, we really just need that. That's super cool and you'll see why. So. This is kind of, this is the kind of setup uh, function that is called and taken a snapshot of. That's why I, I like to call it deploy contract and set variables. Cause if you might need any other variables, you'll, you would declare them here, declare variables here. And then you just return them, you know, say it's a signer or an address one, something like that, right? Okay, so for one, for, for now, we just need the faucet. I'm not gonna write, any test, I'm just covering setup, right? So there we go. We return the faucet. Then I'm actually gonna kind of clean 
a lot of this up by doing this. Check it out. Boom. And because this is such a long test from, from the sample one. Okay, that's all we need. And then I'm gonna delete everything under it. Bye-bye. Oops, sorry. And there we go. And there we go, boom. Isn't this test file much cleaner? Uh, we forgot to change this uppercase lock. Uh, much cleaner. Now we have everything that we need. And obviously still this, this it test is specific to the lock but let's change it. So uh, it used to be called deploy one year lock fixture. Now we're calling it deploy contract and set variables. So we can pass that in there. Whoops, there we go. Ah. All right, and we are returning the faucet from it. So say we wanna do like a quick test. Like let's look at this faucet. I didn't even plan this, but we can do like a quick simple one. Uh, the constructor, it does one thing. It deploys a contract and it sets the initial state for the owner state variable. And what it's doing is it's saying whoever deploys this contract, assign the state variable owner, assign it the message.sender value. So whoever deploys this contract is the owner. That's fine. Let's test that. Let's test that that initial setting in the constructor is correct. So uh, what I like about these it tests is you actually have to sound it out. So like uh, you know, in this faucet scope, which is the global testing scope, you have to say it should deploy and set the owner correctly, right? That's the it block. That's the specific test that we're going to test. If we wanted to do more further tests, we can just add more if blocks, more it blocks, sorry. So like, you know, it should do X, it should do Y. That's a cool thing. So we've got our faucet contract instance from our load fixture. So that's all good. And we wanna test that it sets the owner uh, appropriately or correctly. So let's do a way faucet.owner. It's gonna make a call to owner. And that's fine because owner is public. So we have an automatic getter for it, thanks to Solidity. And then to equal, I think it's gonna to have to equal the kind of default hard hat signer. So let's see, I, I don't want to escape the screen. So let's see, it was let, and, I, and I'll have to move this up to, to the deploy contract and set variables because there's a variable. Uh, it was like let provider equals um, ethers.get. No, 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 uh, provider.get signer. Ooh, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat real quick. Look at this. And let's do get default signer hard hat. Testing contracts, super good resource. There we go. Uh, await ethers, get signer, get signers. There we go. So this little line will give us what we need. And let's put it in the variables. This is basically saying, because get signers, I believe returns the first 10 um, kind of test signers available to you on the local hard hat network. What we're doing is destructuring that and saying, give me back the first one. You can, you can, you can assign more. You can do owner, you know, signer two, signer three, and that destructuring, that array syntax will assign each of those relevant signers uh, respectively. We only need the first one. We, we're choosing to call it owner. We can also call it default signer, default hard hat signer. But for one, we have what we need. And now let's take that owner variable and return it from our load fixture function. So now we have to get the owner here. And now we have everything that we need to test. That's it. We've just written a test. We're basically saying it should deploy uh, the contract and set the owner correctly. And what we get is a contract instance deployed from this deploy contract and set variables. We're, set, we're just setting a quick variable for us from the local hard hat network. And what we expect is since the call is made on the local hard hat network, it's gonna be the default signer always. So unless you specifically use another signer via contract.connect. So now we have everything we need and let's just to not even escape this screen, let's open a terminal in, in VS code and let's do mpx hardhat test. Let's see, let's see, fingers crossed. 
Oof. All right. Let's see. Uh, oh, okay. So this is a good error to get. Where the contract, the test failed because it expected an address, which it's fetching successfully from the contract, but then it's equaling it to a signer. And a signer is a whole big object. So we actually want to get the address of that signer. A signer is a whole big object re representative of like an Ethereum account. We just want the that signer's address. Let's see if we can get away with this. Otherwise, we might need to do something like, you know, like const address one equals owner dot get address. We might need to do that, but let's see. Let's see if we can just get away with dot notation here. Let's clear this. MPXR.test, fingers crossed. Hey, there we go. Should deploy and set the owner correctly. Sweet, awesome. And you might be wondering like, ah, oh, come on, like that's so easy, you probably set it up and you know, how do you know it's even working? Well, you can always stress test it, of course, and say, let's get a, another signer and then I'll end the video. Uh, let's get a signer two. And just to verify, let's do the signer two address and we can do signer two address. There we go. And let's just do the owner address, the signer one, but we're calling it owner here. Let's just do signer one address. And you'll see that we're getting back uh, two addresses from hardhat. Let's see, where's our console log? Why is it not um, console log in here? Maybe I need to, what am I doing? Oh, signer one is not defined. Oh, my bad. Uh, so I need to do owner. Okay, now it's gonna console log on. Sweet. So know this address. This this address I've seen probably thousands of times. That's the default signer, the first default signer of the hard hat network. So that's the one that kind of, you know, you always kind of recognize. And then there's the second one, it's deterministic. So it's the same one every single time. So I can run this again. It'll be the same exact, um, ex same exact values. So we can test this and say, hey, wait a second, like let's stress test this test and maybe let's throw it, let's throw it a wrench and see if, let's bring this signer2 address in here, import it, and let's see, we're gonna kind of purposefully, you know, write the test wrong to see that it actually fails, that to see that the faucet.owner call actually gives back this first address and it's gonna fail, right? Because we're saying this is gonna be equal to this. So it's mpxr.test, it's gonna fail. It's gonna say, hey, it expected this one, but it got this one, right? So that's how you know hardhat is the beast with testing. So we can bring this back to owner.address, bring back signer, remove that, remove that, and there we go. We just set up a quick, whoops, hard hat test. Let's test it again. And then I want to cover one more thing and then I'll end the video. Epic's hard hat test will run all the tests in your, in your test folder. But if you want to be more efficient, you can also just run the direct path. You can do test faucet test. It's just going to do the exact same thing. Whoops. What is it saying? I recognize MPX hard hat test test. That's a, a lot of people get cut off there because because it's a little confusing to do test test, but faucet tests.js. And there we go. So it, that's just a more specific like, hey, test this file. But if you do mpx hard hat test, it's just going to test every single file. Cool. I hope that's helpful. And let me know any feedback in the Discord. Thanks, everybody.